Most people believe that the desert is nothing but a vast, empty land of nothingness. But occasionally, the desert hides the most unbelievable things. From bizarre settlements to desert artifacts, here are the 20 strangest things found in the Sahara and other deserts. Number 20. The Squatter's Paradise If you're from around California, particularly near the Sonoran Desert, perhaps you might recognize this first location, Slab City. Well, it's called a city, but all it is is a patch of desert, a square mile of freedom and anarchy, where the remnants of a former military base have become the foundations of America's last free place. Until it was decommissioned in 1956, Slab City was part of a military installation during the Second World War. The land reverted to the state of California, and the buildings were dismantled, leaving behind the concrete slabs that gave Slab City its name. Over time, people settled on these slabs, and a community gradually formed. Because of the lack of tight governance, Slab City has since become known as a free land. Here, there are no services such as electricity, running water, sewage systems, or trash collection. And so, those who chose to stay here must rely on solar power and self-sufficient water and waste systems. Now you're probably thinking, who would even want to live in Slab City? Well, quite a lot, actually. You see, the Slab City maintains several thousand people, including retirees, people who seek low-cost shelter, and of course, those who want to leave everything behind and try to seek refuge somewhere far away. In the summer, however, the population here decreases, with many unable to bear the temperature in the desert that can soar as high as 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. The Mysterious Fairy Circles of Namibia Now perhaps you've already heard about the mysterious barren patches all over a region of the Namibian desert. These empty circles in the arid grasslands of the Namib desert are known as fairy circles and they puzzled scientists and sparked numerous theories over the years. These circles often range between 7 and 39 feet. And if you have trypophobia, the fear of closely packed holes, clusters, or irregular patterns, it's not a good idea to spectate these barren patches from an aerial view. So far, there are two main theories explaining these patches. The first is the termite hypothesis, which suggests that these circles result from termites cleaning the vegetation in areas around their nests. By doing so, they supposedly create rainwater reservoirs beneath the surface, benefiting the termites and the surrounding ecosystem. The second theory focuses on the vegetation itself. It proposes that the fairy circles are a product of plant competition, particularly for water in this arid environment. The grasses surrounding these circles may extract moisture from the soil at a distance, creating these barren patches. This idea is rooted in the concept of self-organization, where plants collectively adjust their growth patterns to maximize resource utilization, leading to these distinct circular formations. Interestingly, the debate around fairy circles became even more complex with the discovery of similar patterns in Australia, where no apparent link to termites was found. This observation led some researchers to lean more toward the self-organization theory. Recent studies have suggested that these formations could be an example of eco-hydrological feedback, where the barren circles help sustain the surrounding grasses by activating as water reservoirs. Naturally, there are also others who believe that the fairy circles are the result of something supernatural, a gateway to the gods or fairies. To this day, there are still debates surrounding the real origin of these barren patches. Number 18. Heart-Shaped Lake Deserts are known for being a harsh environment where bodies of water are scarce. And yet, Dubai's impressive Love Lake, located in the Al Qudra Desert near Al Qudra, is a testament to human ingenuity. Witnessing this massive creation, one might easily believe they're in the heart of a scorching hot desert. This man made lake, uniquely designed in the shape of two intersecting hearts, stands as a symbol of love and romance, making it a popular spot for couples and families. Not only is this body of water stunning, but it's also surrounded not by 1,000, but by a staggering 16,000 trees and a multitude of flowers. Visitors can swim in the lake or take a peaceful walk among the flora, finding various heart-shaped structures decorated with plants and flowers along the way. Now, if you're interested in coming here, you need to take note of a few things. Again, Love Lake is located inside the desert, which means there are no paved roads for you to use to reach it. This means traveling in an SUV might be required. 
Despite the brilliance of the heart-shaped lake, there are no facilities for drinking water or washrooms there either. The location is ideal for watching sunsets, but since there are no lights around, carrying flashlights is recommended. Also, wearing sandals or flip-flops is preferable for comfort, as walking on sand is required. If you're among the many who have seen the lake in person, feel free to share your experience in the comments. Number 17. World's Most Remote Post Office Imagine you're walking in the desert. It seems like there's only the endless nothingness of sand in the distance. The desert and the blue sky meeting at the horizon make it look like there's an ocean tens of miles away. Then suddenly, in the middle of nowhere, you see a shack. A small wooden shack. This is the most remote post office in the world, located in the middle of the Tengar Desert. This unique post office, measuring only 15 square meters, was abandoned for over 35 years until a few individuals rediscovered it. The idea to bring it back to life was initiated by Ms. Zhang and her friend Luo Meng. They developed the novel concept of a ghostwriting business, enabling people to send letters and postcards from this remote location without actually visiting it. Sounds like an awesome idea, right? I would even be interested in doing it. Over 20,000 letters and postcards were sent from the Tengar Desert Post Office in December 2021 alone. These letters, adorned with a unique desert-themed stamp, are written at the post office and then transported 10 kilometers to the nearest road for pickup and delivery worldwide. The revival of the post office involved transporting building materials to the desert and constructing the shack on site, a process that took around 20 days. Once operational, the post office was officially recognized as one of over 700 post offices in China. The coordinates of this post office are 38.413 degrees north-north latitude and 105.225 degrees east-east longitude. In case you find yourself in the vast Tengar Desert and wish to visit or send a letter from the world's most remote post office. Number 16. The World's Most Bizarre Defense Mechanism Animals in the wild have their own way of surviving for as long as possible. Snakes, for instance, have insane camouflage capabilities because of their skin and color. Cobras and rattlesnakes have venom that allow them to easily eliminate a threat. Meanwhile, constrictors have strong muscles that could easily crush their victims. However, did you know that there's a snake that has the most bizarre defense mechanism? It's farting. Yep, you heard that right. This is the western hook-nosed snake, which resides in the deserts across the United States and Mexico, and it boasts quite an amusing defense mechanism. When threatened, this snake emits air bubbles from its cloaca, the common opening for excretion at a snake's rear end. This produces a farting sound which is designed to perplex predators long enough for the snake to escape. But that's not the most unbelievable part of it. You see, the sound of this snake's fart can travel up to a staggering 6.6 .6 feet and can last for about two tenths of a second and it's often repetitive. Although these farts aren't particularly loud by human standards, they produce a higher pitch, which can be confusing to other animals. What's more, this action is so strong that it propels the snake off the ground sometimes. This certainly isn't a normal defense mechanism, with only the Arizona coral snake having farts as their defense mechanism as well. Number 15. 36 million year old sea monster. In 2022, a sea monster was discovered in the Peruvian desert, but, well, there's nothing to worry about, as this creature has been dead for 36 million years. Archaeologists believe the ancient creature is a Basilosaurus, an early ancestor of modern-day whales, dolphins, and porpoises. The Basilosaurus, whose name means King Lizard, was not a reptile, but rather a mammal with a long body that likely moved similarly to a giant snake. This massive predator is estimated to have been around 12 meters, about 39 feet in length, and it's also roughly the height of a four-story building equipped with long, sharp teeth ideal for hunting. It was a true behemoth of the ocean millions of years ago. Its features suggest that it was a top predator of its time, capable of inflicting considerable damage while hunting for food like tuna, schools of sardines, and even sharks. Thanks to the Okokahe Desert, the fossil was kept well-preserved. When the Basilosaurus died, its skull likely sank to the sea floor and was rapidly buried, leading to its exceptional preservation. The desert conditions preserved it in an excellent state, just in time for us to learn more about the creatures long before we existed. Number 14. The Creeping Devil When you hear about a creature known as the Creeping Devil, what do you imagine it as? If you ask me, I would think it's a creepy crawly, but in reality, 
The creeping devil is a rare cactus species with quite a bizarre way of living. Unlike most cacti that grow vertically, the creeping devil grows horizontally on the ground, with only its tip slightly raised. This growth pattern is critical to its survival in isolation and enables it to migrate over long periods. However, it also does something bizarre. The cactus grows at one end while the other gradually dies. New roots develop on the underside of the stern, anchoring it to the ground and absorbing water and nutrients. As the older part of the plant decomposes, it nourishes the newer growth, enabling the cactus to crawl across the desert floor. This process of simultaneous growth and decay allows the creeping devil to slowly traverse the desert terrain, moving towards areas with optimal conditions for its survival. The speed at which this organism travels depends on the climate. In the moist marine environment of its native locale, it can move up to two feet per year. Due to its isolation and scarcity of pollinators, it often relies on this morbid self-cloning for survival. Cactus pieces break off from the base, die, and then grow independently as new plants. Unfortunately, despite its qualities, it still faces threats due to trafficking and agricultural activities. Number 13. Bizarre Tumor Quite the morbid discovery was made in the ancient Egyptian city of Amarna, where archaeologists uncovered a 3,000-year-old ovarian tumor with teeth in the remains of a young woman. Yes, you heard that right. This tumor is known as a tetratoma, and I hate to break it to you, but it appears in human bodies to this day. Essentially, tetratomas are unusual tumors that can contain a variety of tissues, including muscle, hair, teeth, or bone, and are most commonly found in the ovaries or testicles. This particular tetratoma discovered in the Egyptian woman was about the size of a nickel or a large grape. It has two depressions containing deformed teeth, at the time of its discovery, the tetratoma was one of the five ever found, with the others located in Europe and Peru. Archaeologists believe that the woman is estimated to be between 18 and 21 years old at the time of her death. Likely, she wasn't anyone of importance as she was buried in a non-elite cemetery. However, she was found with a ring adorned with the image of Bess, an Egyptian deity associated with fertility and childbirth, on her left hand placed over her abdomen above the tetratoma. This placement suggests that the ring might have been used as a magical medical object, possibly to invoke protection against the pain or symptoms caused by the tumor or to aid in conception and childbirth. The mummy was found in Amarna, a city founded by Pharaoh Akhenaten to worship the sun god Aten. Although it once housed a population ranging from 20,000 to 50,000 people, Amarna was abandoned shortly after Akhenaten's death. The city has become a rich archaeological site, yielding numerous significant finds, including this rare tetratoma. Now who knows just what other things it'll yield in the future. Hopefully, no more tooth tumors. Number 12. The Giant Hand in the Desert Imagine walking around the desert and suddenly seeing this. This is the giant hand in the middle of the Atacama Desert. It's a massive sculpture of a hand located right in the middle of the Atacama. This impressive structure stands approximately 36 feet tall and is situated around 75 kilometers southeast of the town of Antofagasta. This sculpture was created by Chilean sculptor Mario Irarazabal. This hand protrudes from the ground, emerging from the barren desert landscape. It was completed in 1992 and quickly became known as the Mano del Desierto, or Desert Hand. The sculpture is made of cement and iron and has become a popular tourist attraction drawing visitors from all over the world. But what's the point of this sculpture? Well, it's up to you. It's art, after all. However, the majority often interpret it as a symbol of human vulnerability and helplessness, emerging in stark contrast to the vast and harsh environment of the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. Not only is this sculpture art, but those who reach this sculpture also leave behind their mark by signing their names on the stone. For this reason, the hand of the Atacama gets painted over and undergoes maintenance once every several years. Number 11. The Bizarre Monolith in the Utah Desert In late 2020, a helicopter crew flying over Utah for a routine wildlife mission spotted something unexpected amidst the barren landscape, a lone metallic monolith. It was a three-sided metal structure, about 10 to 12 feet high, firmly placed in the red rocks. So what was this enigmatic monolith? The most plausible theory is that it's an artistic statement, a human-made installation that mysteriously appeared in one of the most remote parts of the desert. The construction of the monolith, 
with metal sheets joined by rivets, suggested a deliberate and crafted effort rather than a natural occurrence. But who put it there? And why? This is where things get interesting. Some thought it could be a tribute to the late artist John McCracken, known for similar minimalist structures. Then there were the more outlandish theories. Could it be a message from extraterrestrial beings? A probe from another world, mysteriously placed in the Utah desert? Or perhaps a secret government experiment? A part of some clandestine operation unknown to the public? Before we could get answers, the monolith disappeared as quickly as it popped up. This disappearance only fueled the conspiracy theories and wild guesses about its origins. Has it served its purpose? Was its removal an attempt to preserve the desert's integrity from the crowds of curious onlookers it attracted? Ultimately, the Utah monolith remains a tantalizing enigma, a modern-day mystery. Number 10. The Nazca Lines Nestled in the arid plains of the Peruvian desert lies one of history's most enigmatic creations, the Nazca Lines. These colossal geoglyphs etched into the earth were created by the ancient Nazca people more than 2,000 years ago. Impressively, these patterns are etched over an astonishing 450 square kilometers. It comprises over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and 70 animal and plant designs, or biomorphs. These include representations of spiders, monkeys, fish, sharks, orcas, and lizards, with some figures stretching up to 370 meters in length. The creation of these lines involved the careful removal of reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert. Once these pebbles were removed, the light-colored earth beneath contrasted sharply with the surrounding land, creating the figures. The purpose of the Nazca Lines has been the subject of much speculation. Initially thought to be astronomical in nature, aligning with various celestial bodies, this theory has been largely disputed. Other hypotheses suggest that they may have served religious or ceremonial purposes, or were part of complex rituals to summon water, a precious resource in the arid region. Some even propose that they were ancient forms of art, or part of a system for water management. Number 9. 9,000-Year-Old Shrine In March 2022, archaeologists made a groundbreaking discovery in the deserts of Jordan, particularly in the eastern Al Jafar Basin, a well-preserved Neolithic religious site believed to be around 9,000 years old. Archaeologists shared that the state of preservation of the site was notably exceptional for its age. The shrine features two large standing stones carved with anthropomorphic figures an altar, and a hearth. These elements are accompanied by almost 150 marine fossils and a small-scale model of a desert kite, a type of trap used to capture and slaughter wild gazelles. These kites were significant structures in the Middle East and Southwest Asia, used by Neolithic hunters to corral animals. But perhaps the discovery of the two anthropomorphic stones, named Gassen and Abu Gassen, is the most significant part of this discovery. After all, these two stones provide rare examples of some of the oldest artistic expressions in the Middle East. The larger stone, over three and a half feet tall, bears the carving of a human figure and a desert kite, while the smaller, two-foot-tall stone is inscribed with a human face. The site's location near full-size desert kites and the presence of numerous gazelle bones in the vicinity suggest that hunting played a central role in the cultural and economic life of the people who built the shrine. Archaeologists hypothesize that the altar and hearth were used for sacrificial offerings, perhaps to invoke supernatural forces for successful hunts. Number 8. The Desert Breath The Great Desert Breath. It's easy to mistake it for something created by extraterrestrials. However, the truth is that it's not something alien. In reality, this magnificent site, located near the Red Sea in Algona, Egypt, is an extraordinary land art installation in the Sahara Desert. It was created by the DAST art team, consisting of three Greek artists, Denis Strato, Alexandra Strato, and Stella Constantinidis. It was officially completed on March 7, 1997, and it covered about 10 hectares of desert sand by its completion. The installation is a remarkable feat of geometric precision and artistic vision, consisting of 89 conical depressions and 89 protruding cones set in two interlocking spirals that gradually increase in size. The sand removed from the depressions was used to create the protruding cones, resulting in the displacement of 8,000 cubic meters of sand. At the center of this breathtaking piece was a body of water, 30 meters in diameter, which has since evaporated. But what does this piece of art mean? Well, the desert breath was designed to explore infinity, 
and the desert as a landscape of the mind. The gradual disintegration of the artwork due to natural erosion is seen as an instrument to measure the passage of time. Number 7. Strange Yellow Glass Discovered in 1932, Libyan desert glass has remained a captivating mystery. This extraordinary glass, found scattered across the southeast of Libya and southeast Egypt, stands out for its unique yellowish hue and exceptional purity. It's so intriguing that pieces of it were even discovered in the tomb of the famous pharaoh Tutankhamun. For almost a century, scientists have been piecing together the origins of this enigmatic substance. The most compelling theory suggests that around 29 million years ago, a massive meteorite struck the Earth. The evidence? The glass contains minerals like cristobalite and zircon, which only form under extreme temperatures, pointing towards a cosmic collision. However, after the discovery of redite, a rare mineral that only forms under the intense pressures of a meteorite impact, this discovery of Libyan desert glass has tipped the scales, heavily favoring the meteorite theory. Number 6. A Dystopian Lighthouse If I asked you to guess what this photo shows, what would you say? It might look like CGI, but this is a real place on Earth. This eerie structure set in a dystopian world is the Ashalim Power Station, located in the Negev Desert. It's a concentrated solar power station that merges three forms of energy, solar thermal, photovoltaic, and even natural gas that has been in operation since 2019. This station includes two colossal 121 megawatt solar thermal plants and a 30 megawatt photovoltaic plant. One of these thermal plants, known as Ashalim Plot B, is incredible, dominating the skyline at a staggering 260 meters, or over 850 feet. It was, until recently, the tallest solar panel tower in the world. Just imagine 50,000 heliostats, computer-controlled mirrors catching the sunlight, focusing its rays onto a towering boiler. This process heats water to produce steam, generating electricity, enough to power 120,000 homes. Number 5. Trains in the Desert The abandoned trains in the deserts of Saudi Arabia are a fascinating and somewhat eerie sight. These trains are remnants of the Hejaz Railway, a once vital and ambitious project conceived in the late 19th century by the Ottoman Empire. The railway was intended to connect Damascus in Syria to Medina in Saudi Arabia, primarily to facilitate the pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. The construction of the Hejaz Railway began in 1900 and was a remarkable feat of engineering for its time. It was built to strengthen Ottoman control over its distant Arabian provinces and to foster better connections for trade and military movement. However, the railway's active life was relatively short. It became a target during World War I, particularly by the forces of the Arab Revolt, who saw it as a symbol of Ottoman oppression. After the war and the subsequent fall of the Ottoman Empire, Parts of the railway fell into disuse and were abandoned. The harsh desert conditions have since taken their toll on the remnants, leaving behind a series of hauntingly beautiful and desolate scenes of rustling locomotives and decaying railway infrastructure. Number 4. The Plot's Plot The Plot's Plot, located near Arizona's Petrified Forest National Park and close to historic Route 66, is definitely a weird thing to see in the desert. It was established in 2020 to honor David Plotz, the outgoing CEO of Atlas Obscura. Spanning 1.18 acres of desert land, this plot serves as a pilgrimage site for individuals undergoing significant life changes. People navigating personal transformations are encouraged to contribute by leaving behind symbols of their past lives in this evolving museum. Inside a refurbished shipping container, shelves display items donated by members of the Atlas Obscura community each representing a chapter of their journey. The inaugural contribution, initiated by David Plotz, features a Duder Giga bike backpack symbolizing his CEO tenure at Atlas Obscura. This backpack, a steadfast companion during his extensive commute from his home in Washington to his office in Brooklyn, now finds its place in the Plotz plot as he embarks on a new adventure beyond Atlas Obscura. So if you have something you want to leave behind, perhaps a trip here might do you good. Number 3. The Traveler's Monument This is the Traveler's Monument, and it's among the most peculiar spots right in the California desert. This spot is located at a very remote location in the Mojave National Preserve, a sprawling 1.3 million acre expanse established in 1994 to protect a rich desert ecosystem. At about 4,000 feet above sea level, you'll find this curious site, a large pile of rocks. 
each placed by passing travelers. The travelers' monument's origins are shrouded in mystery. Who started it? When did it begin? These questions remain unanswered, but what's known is its unwritten rule. Each traveler passing by adds a rock. In case you're interested, it's located near the intersection of Mojave Road and Aiken Mine Road. Getting there is an adventure in itself, requiring a high-clearance four-wheel drive vehicle. It's not just the journey, but the anticipation that makes it unique. Imagine selecting the perfect rock to add to this collection, symbolizing your part in this unspoken tradition of travelers. Number 2. The Tea Kettle Junction Tea Kettle Junction, nestled in Death Valley, California, atop an elevation of 4,150 feet, is another traveler's stop you might want to add to your bucket list. It's quite obvious how exactly this location got its name. Here, visitors partake of the tradition of attaching tea kettles to the signpost at the junction, often leaving messages or decorating them in various ways. Again, we don't know how this thing started, but, well, no one really questions it and partakes in the tradition. Some people believe leaving a kettle behind or writing a message on one brings good luck. Others think it's a fun way to leave a mark on their adventure. Occasionally, the rangers or locals will clear out some of the kettles hanging on the signage. They do this to keep the place tidy and make room for new visitors to add their kettles. So if you come back and fail to see yours again, don't fret too much. So if you ever find yourself in Death Valley, swing by Tea Kettle Junction, bring a kettle, leave a message, and be part of the story. And now it's time for today's topic. Scientists are worried by what's going on in the Sahara Desert. So should we? In the vast and enigmatic expanse of the Sahara Desert, a recent discovery has the scientific community and conspiracy theorists on edge. Conspiracies believe that in the near future, satellite images will relay an unusual phenomenon, a mysterious, gaping hole visible from space. They speculate that this might happen due to a natural occurrence, perhaps a sinkhole, which isn't uncommon in desert regions. Sinkholes often form due to the dissolution of underlying soluble rocks like limestone, gypsum, or salt beds, leading to the collapse of the surface layer. In the Sahara, with its complex geological history, such an event is plausible. However, should we be worried about this possibility? Number 1. The Otherworldly Dagger of King Tutankhamun King Tutankhamun's dagger, discovered in his tomb, holds a significant place in both ancient history and modern scientific discovery. From its initial discovery to recent times, this blade proved to be mysterious, puzzling archaeologists and researchers. It wasn't until several years ago that researchers discovered that this blade contained materials from a meteorite. This fact alone makes it an extraordinary artifact, considering the period in which King Tut lived, the Bronze Age the time when iron smelting was not yet practiced in Egypt. Scientific analysis using X-ray fluorescence spectrometry revealed that it contained a high proportion of nickel and traces of cobalt. These elements are characteristic of meteoritic iron, aligning with ancient Egyptian references to iron from the sky. The research indicated that the material closely matched the composition of the Karga meteorite discovered near Marsa Matra. The dagger's handle is equally remarkable, adorned with gold, glass inlays, and a rock crystal knob. The craftsmanship reflects the high status and significance of the artifact. The presence of the Widmastatin pattern on the blade, the texture unique to meteoritic iron, further corroborates its celestial origin. This pattern emerges when iron-nickel mixtures and meteorites cool and crystallize over millions of years in space. The historical context of the dagger suggests it may have been an imported item, perhaps a royal gift from the Mitanni kingdom, as hinted by the Amarna letters. These letters describe iron gifts sent to Egypt's pharaohs, including a dagger with similar characteristics. To this day, the mystery of King Tut's dagger remains. So which of these discoveries intrigued you the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.